Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for these ministrations that are coming by the Spirit of the Lord. Last edition, we began to look at the topic, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And then um, we began by saying we will be looking at this topic from the point of view of a mandate, a divine mandate to declare the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And we said John the Baptist was a very good example of this ministry. And the last time we began to look at a few things that are written about John in the book of Matthew chapter 3. And uh, we'll go there. We'll start our readings from Ma Matthew 3. And uh, start reading from verse 5. It says, Then went thou to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. Then from verse 7, we see different categories of people that John ministered to. And we will want to pay attention to the things that he said to those people. He said, when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Hallelujah. Pharisees, Sadducees were spiritual leaders of the day in which John lived. As John had caused to minister to many of them, so also did the Lord Jesus Christ had to minister to them. Uh, Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees who came to see Jesus in the night, but we're looking principally at the heralding of the coming of the Lord by John. Talks to the Pharisees, talks to the Sadducees, you know, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? As it was true then, so is it true now that there is a wrath to come? There is a judgment that is coming. There is a shaking that is coming. The word of the Lord says, I shake the heavens, I shake the earth. There is a, sh and of course, I am sure nobody needs to tell anybody that the times we are living in at this moment are times of shaking. All manners of, you know, at least we know the pandemic that, you know, has come upon the earth. But what is happening is that it's not even the case of the pandemic with many people. All manners of reports, this person fell down and died, that one, you know, this happened, that one happened. Nobody prays that anything like that should happen. But what is important is not whether a person is, you know, smitten by an ailment or not, but how prepared are you? How prepared are you, you know, to meet God? If you were to stand before God, because many will give the excuse, well, maybe when I know I'm closer to the time I will be going, I will repent. I will change the way I've been doing things. But a lot of people today is here, tomorrow is gone. Very limited notice. So there is a wrath to come. Hallelujah. Who is warning you? He saw the Pharisees, he saw the Sadducees, came to his baptism. And he said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? There is a wrath to come. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Hallelujah. That is a word 
for the whole body of Christ. Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. It is not sufficient to say, I go to church, I carry Bible, I pray long hours. What kind of prayer do you pray? Who are you praying to? Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Hallelujah. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Hallelujah. So it is quite key. It is very, very important. We must show forth a life that shows we have had an encounter. An encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our lives must show forth His glory. There must be evidence that we have truly and genuinely repented. And then He says, don't think to say within yourselves, you have Abraham to your father. That's not an acceptable, I go to a church, we really love God. You know, in our church, we are God's people. That is a secondary consideration. The core consideration is, is there the evidence of the presence of God, the life of God in your life? Don't think to say, we have, you know, we have Abraham as our father. He says, God is able of stones to raise children unto Abraham. And then a warning. The axe is laid unto the root of the trees. The axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is brought down. And the cry of our heart will be, Lord, may I not be brought down. May you not be brought down. Every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. He says, his fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor. He will gather the wheat into the garner, but burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Hallelujah. Then in Luke chapter 3, verse 10, we see him make a similar statement, but to another category of people. Luke 3, first from 7, and then we'll touch the, but you know, similar to what he had said before. Luke 3, reading from 7, then said it to the multitude that came forth to be baptized, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the road to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. Let the evidence that you have repented be there. Don't begin to say we have Abraham to our father. For I say that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Then the people asked him, saying, What shall we do? He answered and said unto them, He who has two coats, let him impart to him that had none. And he who has meat, let him do likewise. So it's not enough, Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, I'm serving God. No. You have two coats, give one to the person who has a need. Somebody is hungry, he has no food, give him food to eat. Hallelujah. Then came also publicans to be baptized. What shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. It looks like a speech to politicians. You know, many see today as politics is the means to an end. If you look and you cannot find a job, then go and become a politician. And when you go there, you go and loot. God is saying there is a wrath to come. 
there is a coming judgment. So, what shall we do? Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And then the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, What shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Now, that is a tall order. You know, many see politics as a means to an end. Others say, oh, if I join the military, then, you know, it will be an opportunity to make money. As it was then, so it is now. Be content with your wages. Hallelujah. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts, whether it were Christ or not, John answered, saying, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I comes, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor. He will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Hallelujah. We need to realize that, that at the end of things, there will be two gatherings. Some will be gathered to be burnt off, and then the others will be gathered as the true harvest of God. Hallelujah. May we be numbered among these. Now, like we said, the thrust of the beginnings of this ministration is that we might recognize a responsibility, that the church might recognize a responsibility to reach out to the unsaved, to reach out to the unrepentant, to minister to the children, that their hearts be turned to their father, the heavenly father, so that, you know, the heart of the father may equally be turned unto them, that he might come in mercy unto them. Now, in the course of the past few months, a few things have come that I want to share with us. I remember sometime last year, I had cause to be traveling to the U.S. as well as to Canada. And as I was going, I was asking the Lord, you know, what exactly do you have that I tell your children? And the Lord led me to the book of Acts chapter 18. Acts 18, reading from verse 9. It says, Then spake the Lord, Acts 18 verse 9, Then spake the Lord to Paul, In the night by a vision, be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with you, and no man shall set on you to hurt you. For I have much people in this city. And I believe that is a word of prophecy unto Zion at this time. Be not afraid, but speak. Remember that we made reference to Zion in Isaiah 40. O Zion that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. Zion must bring good tidings. Zion cannot be silent. Zion cannot keep quiet. Zion must preach the gospel of reconciliation. Reconciling the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers. And we said the beginning of the reconciliation is reconciling men to God, turning their hearts, telling them, behold, Jesus died on the cross. Behold the Lamb. He is the Lamb. Any other person before him, any after him, they are not the Lamb. He said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace. I am with you. No man shall set on you to hurt you. Now, this is relevant because we live in a time when many of us find ourselves living in different countries. And 
you know, there are different laws, there are different rules, and many of us ask ourselves, well, how do we reach out? How do we tell others? You know, how do we propagate the gospel? And we say the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we must seek His face. We must cry unto Him. We must ask for counsel. We must ask for wisdom. We must ask for how do we go about it? How do we reach out to others? Hallelujah. I am with you. No man shall set on you to hurt you. For I have much people in this city. And that's the truth. In every city in which we find ourselves, God has many people in those cities. And we have a responsibility. In a similar, you know, light, the Word of God in Amos chapter 6 also speaks in a similar, you know, manner. Amos 6 Reading from verse 1, it says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Amos 6 1. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Verse 3. Ye that put away the evil day. And cause the seat of violence to come near. You know, you have an attitude, well, we don't know when the day of wrath, the day of God's anger will come. So, let's not uh, bother ourselves. You that put far away the evil day and cause the seat of violence to come near. That lie upon the beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the storm, that chant to the sound of the viol, and invent to themselves instruments of music, like David, that drink wine in bowls, and anoint themselves with the chief ointments. Now, definitely God is not saying all these things are bad. Definitely not. Well, three is bad. You know, three says, some put far away the evil day. Oh no, the, the evil day, the day of government, uh, God, God's judgment, the day of God's wrath. Oh, well, it's still far. It's not anywhere near. Let us continue to live as we like. Nothing is going to happen. That is wrong. But there's nothing wrong in lying upon beds of ivory. There's nothing wrong in lying, uh, stretching upon couches. As long as we are not sleeping more than we ought to sleep. You know, eating lambs out of the flock, calves out of the midst of stock. That's not what God is saying. God is not saying don't eat. He says they chant to the sound of the viol. You know, it's like, you know, give themselves to music, entertainment. Well, that is not the issue. You know, but the issue is the second part of six. They drink wine in bowls. They anoint themselves with the chief ointments. But they are not grieved. For the affliction of Joseph. They are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. They are not concerned about the things God is concerned about. They are not concerned about, you know, the lost. They are not concerned about the hopeless. They are not concerned about the afflicted. They are not concerned about those under the yoke. Hallelujah. So, we do have a responsibility, a responsibility to reach out, a responsibility to seek God. Lord, how do we reach those you want to reach? Jesus said on that day, you know, in Matthew 25, I will come and I will say, I was sick, you did not visit me. I was in prison, you know, I was hungry, I was naked and you did not show any interest. You were not concerned. And many will say, but when did you do that? As long as you did not do it to the least of this, my brethren, you have not done it unto me. Hallelujah. So, there must be a concern. There must be a grieving. There must be a concern for the affliction of Joseph. There must be a concern. For the lost estate of men, it's part of the mandate, it's part of the body. Hallelujah. In fact, 
very recently, we had a time of waiting on the Lord as a fellowship. And as we were rounding up the time of waiting on the Lord, there was a word that came that definitely requires, you know, going to the Lord to say, Lord, how will you have this uh, looked at? We live at a time when, you know, going out is not encouraged, but does that mean we will not reach out to people? No matter what happens, we have a mandate. We have a responsibility to reach out to the lost, to bring in people into the harvest. At the end of the period, there was a word that came from Jeremiah 30. And I will read from verse 16. Jeremiah 30, reading from verse 16. It says, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And we say, Amen. And all your adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil you shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon you will I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto you. And I will heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called you an outcast, saying, this is Zion. So this is a, prophet, a prophecy concerning Zion. They say, this is Zion. Who no man seeketh after. You know, Zion is an outcast. Zion is unrecognized. Zion is uncelebrated. But God says, I will restore health. I will heal you of your wounds. You are called an outcast. This is Zion. No man seeks after it. Verse 18. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents. And have mercy on his dwelling places. I will have mercy upon my people. I will visit them. And the city shall be built upon our own heap. The palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Verse 19. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. The Lord will visit Zion. He will visit his people. He will visit his church. He will visit his faithful ones, his committed ones, his focused ones. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And then as a core ministration, he says, I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. I will also glorify them. And they shall not be small. Hallelujah. And I want us to dwell a little bit on this as we round up this second edition. Out of your midst shall proceed thanksgiving. It means I will give you sound help. I will protect you. None shall be, you know, our hurt. The enemy will try, but his attempt will not work in the name of Jesus. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. There will be merriment. Those who are looking up to God for life partners, life partners will come. Those who are looking up to God for means of livelihood, God will provide. God will open doors, doors of help, doors of favor. But we must understand the full import of the word of God. The voice of those who make merry says, I will multiply them and they shall not be few. And then that brings an issue that has been a matter of interest. If God is going to increase his body, it will not be by natural birth. You know, a man, two men, three men starts a fellowship and afterwards they marry and then they start having children. And then you go there, you now meet the man, his wife, and the children. And then the three of them, they are, they, you know, their wives and their children. And that is all that is there in the fellowship. That cannot be God's will. That cannot be the way God chooses to move. 
concerning Zion, God says, I will multiply you. You shall not be few. You shall not be few means I will enable you to reach out to others and to bring them in. I will reach out to, you know, I will, I will grant grace to you. You will minister to others. And through the ministry, they will come to know the Lord. They will come to fear the Lord. They will come to walk with the Lord. And to ensure that you do not lack for the work of ministry, the work of reaching out and enlisting men into the kingdom, he says, I will glorify you. I will promote you. I will open doors for you. I will make grace available to you. Brethren, faith is required. Faith for multiplication, faith for enlargement, faith for increase, faith for breakthrough. In the times in which we are in, yes, we are living in a challenging time. There's COVID-19, the economy is going through, you know, some somersaults and all that. We are praying and we believe God will answer. But while we are waiting for God to answer, God says, I will multiply you. You will not be few. I will glorify you. You will not be small. You will not be small. You know, if you remember a few verses earlier, it says, men looked down on Zion. They laughed at Zion. They ridiculed Zion. Is this Zion that, you know, so much has been said about, so much noise, you people are just making noise, they're just talking? No. I will multiply you. You will not be few. I will glorify you. You will not be small. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> says, Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all that oppress them. Hallelujah. So, these are things that we must pay attention to. As John declared, behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. He spoke to the Pharisees, he spoke to the Sadducees, speaking of religious leaders of the day. He spoke to the publicans, speaking of public office holders. He spoke to soldiers, those in power, you know, in the military. He spoke to the generality. And he was emphatic. Don't let whatever you are holding on to, that is not the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let it deceive you. Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Let the evidence that you have a walk with God, that you fear God, let it be evident. Let it be seeable. And then everything. Remember, there is a wrath to come. There is a coming judgment. You will gather, you know, those who are right, and then the others will be burnt. May we not find ourselves among those to be gathered to be burnt in the name of Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord for this time, and we pray that the Lord keep us till the next time we will be continuing in this meditation. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah.